This is Pocket Watching with JT, the call-in financial talk show focused on helping you get your money right. Jason Thornton is a certified financial planner licensed in both tax and investments. Now, this is not personal financial advice. This is JT's real reaction to all your money and business questions. Are you deep in debt, living paycheck to paycheck and looking for a way out? Call Pocket Watching with JT, the financial advisor for the people. Need more? Book your personal consultation with my man JT at pocketwatcher.net. Now, let's go pocket watching. Hey, pocket watchers. Welcome to Pocket Watching with JT. And it is the Wednesday night live stream. So big shout outs to everybody who came on into Pocket Watching with JT. Listen, we are this close this close to 58,000 subscribers. Been on YouTube for a little over a year and we're almost at 58,000. That means we're just that close to 60,000. So do me the favor, hit that red button that says subscribe. Subscribe to Pocket Watching with JT. Hit the like button, share this type of content. If you think this type of information is actually helpful for you, share this content big help to the show when you share this content now it's wednesday night so you know what happens on wednesday night i have my brother with me mr orlando minor let me bring him up to the show what's going on orlando what's going on what's going on listen before we even get into what we're doing i was just on your channel watching the video that you had about the housing market and you were giving an update can you Fill everybody else in on what's going on with the housing market. Yeah, I mean, you know, a, a, as you guys know, the inflation numbers continue to go up and the Fed is continuing to raise interest rates. And it looks like they're going to raise it up by 100 basis points. That's what the rumblings are saying, which would be the highest that it's been raised, you know, since they've been pumping it up here, which it is pushing down demand. And we're starting to see a lot of haircuts happen and, and sellers are, you know, out there complaining, wishing they would have sold their property six months ago. So, you know, it's going down. We're getting there. All right, all right. That's that's what I want to hear. So, all right. So, so listen up, people. What what are we doing tonight? Well, as always, the pocket watchers, you people out there who subscribe to my channel, you constantly send me stuff that you want to see me talk about. And listen, I wouldn't really have a show if it wasn't for the fact that you guys constantly DM me stuff, you tag me and stuff, you email me stuff. So tonight's show is, of course, another pocket watcher request. So before I even get started, let me lay some groundwork of what's going on here. I know you guys may see me on YouTube a lot because you watch my videos. I understand that. But let me let me give you a little explanation of how my life actually works. I don't really live on YouTube. I know you see a lot of videos and be like, oh, JT must be on YouTube like all the time. He's got like over a hundred and some videos. Yeah, l- listen, it takes me time to make these videos, right? It, it, it took time to get up to 100. I'm not just cranking out 
10 videos a day. I do a live stream. I chop up some, uh, some, some clips of some videos, but I'm not really on here a lot. So when it comes to the subject matter of the night, when it comes to uh, Vicky Dillard, I really didn't know who she was when uh, a pocket watcher emailed me and said, hey, look at this. I'd like for you to explain what happened. So uh, I'm sure there's more people in the chat right now who knows more about v uh, Vicky than I do. I'm not coming up here claiming that I am a Vicky expert. I am not, nor do I want to be an expert on who Vicky is. But I'm going to give you the very little bit of background that I can to add context to tonight's show. So a pocket watcher sent me this uh, news article and whatnot and said, hey, this is a person that's very popular on YouTube. She was uh, associated with and a part of a mortgage fraud scam that was busted by the FBI. Can you talk about this? OK, and apparently Vicky used to be apparently maybe someone in the chat can help me out here but vicky used to be associated with dr boyce watkins and his whole network but somewhat recently it seems as if she broke away from boyce's network whatever's going on with that the pocket watcher doesn't really care i don't really care but what i do care about is what you're going to hear tonight is a cautionary tale First and foremost, is this a new scam that she's running right now? Not that I'm aware of. When I look through the story, yeah, this story originated back in 2004. She ended up, I believe, getting indicted around 2010 for this fraud. And then I don't think she even started serving her sentence. And I believe it was a five-year sentence. She wasn't even serving her sentence until around 2000. 12, 11-ish. So yeah, this isn't new. But what I want you to understand is how did she end up in jail? What did she do, according to the FBI, according to the court documents, how did she end up there? Because after me and Orlando start to read how she ended up there, you will realize she was doing things that me and Orlando have been warning you guys not to do for months now, really for, for over a year now. I've been warning you to not use documents and fudge the numbers. You know, you know what your online gurus tell you to do? Just put down random stuff on a bank application, whatever, so that you can obtain, receive things that you would normally not get because you are committing fraud, right? I Listen, the pocket watcher, I, I will repeat myself a million times. I'm, I, I never get tired of repeating myself if the message doesn't come over. So I'm going to say it again. Whenever you use a document and put false information on that document in order to receive things that you know you could not receive, unless you lie on the document, that's a crime. That's fraud. Even though you're not using a gun, even though you're not using some kind of weapon, the instrument of the document, this paperwork is now the weapon of choice for you to commit a crime. Okay? That's how it work. So we're, we're going to go through the document, of course, and the phone lines will be open. I mean, the phone lines are open right now, but I'm not going to take on any calls until me and Orlando get done reading this, <laughs> reading this indictment and stuff like that. But the phone lines are open. And of course, if you have a question about your personal uh, financial situation, business situation, and you want my tips on how to get through whatever mess you think you're in, you're still welcome to give us a call. 515-602-9778. That's 515-602-9778. All right, Orlando, I'm about to put up on the screen here. I'm okay. going to show you what the FBI has on record about this situation. So 
Here's the FBI information here. As you see, the headline says Denver woman sentenced to federal prison for mortgage fraud scam. Now, mm. when, I start to tell, when I start to read to you what she did, it's going to sound very familiar to some other okay. shit we've done <laughs> in the past. Because here's the thing. People, people honestly think that we're, we're like overreacting. When we talk right. about, hey, don't put false stuff on paperwork. Putting false stuff on paperwork can you'll, you'll end up in jail. You're you're committing a crime. They're like, oh, whatever. That's yeah, yeah, lame. Y'all don't know how to get over, <laughs> you know, the the, the, <laughs> the U.S. economy and the whole way that the banks are set up. They're the real criminals. Oh, I get this, Orlando. Why don't you pocket watch the government? Why don't you pocket watch these? <laughs> Why don't you pocket watch these banks? They're the real criminals. So if they're That's criminals funny. and they're lying, we we should be able to lie on documents too. Well, <laughs> this is where you end up. We're, we're about to yeah, show you, you where that type of thinking, where you end up with that. So let me give a when you end up, when you, when you end up in jail, I will go ahead and argue with the government while you're in jail and yeah, see how, how far that? they get you. Yeah, see, see how far <laughs> they get. You. Shouts out to what's this pack? What was that back? Pack Val, backpack Val. Thank you so much. Somebody talk black. <laughs> Somebody talk black to JT. Listen, I've done enough research on Vicky in the thirty minutes before the show started that I know that is a very uh, 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 overused term that she says in her uh, in her little speeches that she gives. Talk black to me. Talk black to me. Well, we got to talk <laughs> black and blue to you uh, <laughs> today on Pocket Watching mm, with JT. Somebody should have talked orange. Right, right, talk, talk <laughs> orange to me. All right, so here's, here's what the FBI has to say. Now, it says here that Vicki Dillard Crow, I believe is her name, a.k.a. Uh, Vicki R. Dillard, age 32. So she was 32 back when this happened, mm. and this, was, this, this report was back in 2012. So age 32 of Denver was sentenced last week to serve... 60 months in federal prison. For those of you who are not as quick when it comes to dividing by 12, I believe that it's five years, right? So we got mm. five years in federal prison. It says here that even after she serves those five years, she is also going to spend three years on supervised release. All right, so it's not just five okay. years locked up. When she does get out, she's still basically going to be checking in with some type of officer to make sure that she's doing the right thing. Now, now, what what is the FBI saying? She said that she's also ordered to pay two million four hundred eight thousand one hundred and forty two dollars and thirty seven cents in restitution to the victims of her crime. Says Crow pocketed close to one million dollars during the course of her fraudulent scheme. Lord have mercy. All right, so so mm. what what was going on? What was she doing? So this actually, she was originally indicted April fifth, two thousand and ten. She was found guilty. December 16th, 2011, and she finally got sentenced on uh, September the 27th, 2012. So as you see, the court process can take some time. <laughs> court process <laughs> is not super, super quick. It can take some nah, time, especially if you're bouncing back and forth, and, and, and you can stretch it out, too, with playing little games with attorneys, but it, it, it can be yeah. stretched out. But here's the thing that I want you to uh, focus on here, Orlando. The actual okay. scheme, according to the FBI, the scheme that she was perpetrating actually started around June 2004. So the FBI is saying she started this scheme in 2004 and ended in December 2006. <laughs> Once again, people, <laughs> they let you her commit. Do it some fraud <laughs> you're not free and clear just because oh, the boy. second you commit the fraud someone doesn't put you in handcuffs boy, she oh, was i mean this is according to the fbi according to the fbi she was done with the scam and wasn't doing anything illegal from december 2006 
she didn't get indicted until four years later. Mm, mm, four mm. years later is when she actually got indicted. So for all of you PPP loan scammers out there, it's like, oh man, whatever. I didn't got the money. They didn't forget the loan. I didn't spent the money. Money gone, right? PPP loan money gone. I'm good. JT is overreacting. He's saying that all of us PPP loan scammers are going to get caught eventually. It's over, right? Apparently, according to the FBI, <laughs> Vicky was done with her scam in December 2006. Four <laughs> years later is when she gets the knock on the door. Four years. So let's think about that. If you got a PPP loan back in 2020, it could be another two, three, four years before, uh, sir, ma'am, need you to come out here. Yeah, yeah. And, on, and you, know, you, know, you know what people are saying? They're saying, oh, that's just her. That, that ain't me. Right? <laughs> that could never be me. It's just, that just, this is a situation that happened just with her. It can't happen to me, man. No, no can, way. Can happen to you. No, no, no. Not you. You're too smart. You're too yeah, smart. You're too but here smart. we go. Mm -hmm. So, the scam, according to the FBI, the scam started around uh, what 2004, ended in 2006. This is basically what was going on. I got another report that we're going to read right after this, and then we're going to we're going to take on calls. I just want you to understand what was going on. All right, mm -hmm. so they're saying that uh, Vicky knowingly devised and intended to devise a scheme to defraud various financial institutions and commercial lenders and to obtain money and property from various financial institutions and commercial lenders by means of here we go how did she get away with this scam what did she use to be able to get money and property and things that she normally would not have access to according to the fbi they say that she was able to obtain these things by the means of materially false and fraudulent pretenses, representations, and promises. The scheme was executed in connection with the residential mortgage uh, loan related to 19 properties in Metro Denver. <laughs> now, now, JT, did yeah. it, this, if this, if it, I can remember. Did right. we just do a video with the with that Todd and and some, that reality TV people yes, that yes, did yes. the exact same thing? The lying, <laughs> man, like, like people. Don't, I don't man, know I tell why you. people think. Oh yeah, I can lie to a bank. Ain't that big deal? As long as I pay, as long as I pay back the loan. If I pay, I pay the loan you. back. It's not. It's not a big mm. deal. I just, you know, yeah, yeah. it's not a big deal. I tell them whatever I want on the paperwork. It's not. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. All right, <laughs> we're gonna get a little deeper on exactly what was going on. So, okay, says as part of the scheme, Vicky worked with at least one mortgage broker to obtain mortgage loans in order to purchase the residential properties at least two of which were purchased in the name of Vicky's husband because Vicky was concerned that she would not qualify for the required mortgage loans. All right? In order to qualify, here we go. In order mm -hmm. to qualify, Vicky made and calls to be made at least one materially false representation. Here we go, including one inflating or fabricating employment what does what does that mean let me break that down for the people who are a little confused <laughs> oh, on what that means inflating your employment what could that mean mm, mm, mm. uh exaggerating about how much money you make <laughs> that, that that's what it basically is you claim that you make more money than what you actually do that is the like number a, one thing that they have. <laughs> like on a on a credit card application? It, uh, it <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> exactly like on a credit card application. Say that you got you make two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. That's very similar. Very, very, <laughs> very, very, very similar <laughs> to that. 
All right, we're going to go through here. Uh, what's number two? Number two says falsely representing uh, defended Crow's job title. She lied about what type of job she had. I guess she wanted to make herself seem as if she had a more important role than what she really did. Number three is failing to disclose all the properties she had recently purchased, like trying to get a bunch of credit cards at the same time so that no one knows that <laughs> no one knows that you're getting all these credit cards at the same time or trying to hide the fact that you have all this credit card debt by shifting all of the uh, balances from one to another to make it appear as if you don't owe anything of your credit cards. But in reality, you are deep in debt. You know the funny thing? It, 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 her line about the, the, the title has that's just she's lying for no reason. Like, there's yeah, that one's like, silly. That, that, <laughs> that's, that, silly that's silly because as a as a mortgage lender myself, all I care about is the numbers. I just want to make sure you can pay back that. I have never seen someone's uh credit or or, or their job title and said, Oh man. This guy's a janitor, a janitor. I'm not gonna, or he's a gym teacher. You know what? I can't give him no money. I, you, you can't, matter of fact, you can't even do that. <laughs> now, now I've read uh, on the other report that we're gonna read. It's gonna, okay. it's gonna give you more information as to why she lied about her job okay. title. Okay. So we're we're okay. gonna get okay. to that point, but yeah, the first when I first read that, I was like, what does it matter what your job title is? Like, yes. what, what does that matter? If, you, if you're already lying about how much money that you're making, why would you lie about the job? That right. makes no sense. But the other one, the next thing that we're going to read will shed a little light as to why, according to the FBI, she was lying about her uh, her job title. Quick shout out to the uh, to the Super Chat. Thank you to the GA text man in the bill. It says, Orlando, has anyone fraudulently borrowed money from you in regards to rental property? No, uh, but but what I can tell you is I've caught a lot of people in lies. I've caught mm -hmm. bank statements that you know people have you know photoshopped or or you know they say in in the balances don't even equal up to the total, and you just like hey you you look at the corner and the you know the 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 fonts are different, and you'd be like what's going on here? Like <laughs> no no oh, please listen. I need I need you to expound on this the sloppiness of people who think, oh, the banks don't care. Just throw something down. Explain how sloppy these people are when they just try to make up fraudulent bank statements, bad, you know, fraudulent W-2s. Explain how easy it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so easy because you you see, you're looking at it just in plain sight and you're like, why does the font, this number four, <laughs> look different than the rest of the whole document? I mean, it's just an easy look. There's, there's no, there's <laughs> you no, know? You've got like like there's like probably twenty fours in this document. Like just on yeah, one page, exactly. just probably on like one page. twenty fours. Why is this one four the most important four? The four that talks about probably how much money you make. Why are these numbers in a different font than all the other numbers and letters in this? <laughs> <laughs> are are what are are the are the biggest one is where you look at a bank statement and it says this page has been intentionally it's left blank, blank. and right. then and then someone puts the balance of the the balance of their checking <laughs> account on that page. right there on that on that page and you're like come on man like <laughs> this page was intentionally left blank they're like whatever man this is an easy spot let me just put. How much money do I have in this account? I have thirty thousand dollars. Like, come on. I'm telling it's you, it's so easy to catch, man. It's so it's easy. easy. It's that easy. All right, we're gonna get through this, people. Uh, give us start calling because we're gonna take calls here in a minute. Five one five six zero two nine seven seven eight. That's five one five six zero two nine seven seven eight. All right, let me see. Here's one of the last ones. It says falsely stating. Here, here's one that you're gonna like, Orlando. Okay. Falsely stating that the property would be a primary residence for the borrower. Hmm. Okay, Orlando, what does that mean? Explain it to the people. What did what yeah. what, what happened? She said it says be she'll be the primary uh, yeah for residence for the borrower. So now this is a big big thing. So when it comes to when it comes to primary residence versus investment. You can lend a lot more on a residence that a person is living in because just in general, 
most people will fight to stay in their home versus an investment. So with an investment, it's more of a risky, uh, more risky deal when you're lending money on it. So the LTV is gonna be less, meaning that they have to put more money down. So people lie because they only wanna bring in at 3%, but they mm -hmm. want to make the money off of the investment. They want the cash and they wanna bring less money down. And that is a no-no when it comes to the mortgage industry, especially when it comes to pro uh, rental properties. It's just a no. So like I say all the time, I tell people, I say, listen, listen, I, I, if you are you going to be living there, you're going to sign so many documentations that say, are you going to live there? No. You're not going to live there, right? No. You're not going to live there again, right? No. Right? And then I tell people, just so you know, the bank is going to send people to drive by randomly <laughs> to your house. They will. They will do that. And if they see you coming out, it, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. They call on the loan and they're right. suing you. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, here we go. I, I, I want to read this from uh, Phil Old Girl. Uh, uh, Phil Zero uh, Girl says, uh, what happens? This is a good question. What happens if you're self-employed? are mm -hmm. in sales and your income comes in uh at less than you thought when filling out the application now before i let orlando tackle this let, let's be clear here. we're not talking right. about someone is like yeah i'm self-employed and you know i'm gonna put down and i make a quarter of a million dollars and you uh, know we're talking about someone who's really really self-employed and obviously your income's gonna fluctuate but the part that i'm gonna hit first before i uh, pass it over to orlando is that hey, listen people Let's 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 call a spade a spade. Let's not stop acting like children. All right, let's, let's, like, you're talking you're, you're talking to your brother JT. Now, now, you, you're not locked up yet. It's not the detective. It's just brother to brother. You know, our brother to sister. Here. Listen, when you're self-employed, yes, obviously your income's going to fluctuate some, and that's understandable. But the projected income or the income that you think you're going to make has to have some sort of grounds in reality, right? Take a person who's self-employed, a barber. This barber consistently makes in the range between $38,000 and $45,000 for the past five years. Then on a credit card application or a mortgage, mortgage application or whatever, they say, hey, you know what? I think this year, I'm going to make $210,000. Then at the end of the year, when they end up making the 45 or hell, they had a really good year. This year, they actually made $50,000. They just shrug their shoulders and say, hey, I made a little less. No, listen. What in any type of history of this barber, this fictitious barber that I just made up, what would lead him to write down the number 210,000? He consistently makes between 38 and 45. Even in the example that I gave, he made an amazing $50,000, which is better than any other year that he did. So you have to have some sort of foundation in reality with your projected income if you are in sales or if you are self-employed. There has to be some sort of reality there. Now, if it was a case where you make normally between 38 and 45 and, you know, you put down 45 and you had a year, a bad year and you made 36, I don't think the banks will be that upset. It's not that big of a difference. At least that's that's in my opinion. What do you think? Oh, I think you muted. The, the, the way that we normally look at that is is that to avoid all of that craziness we're going to take the last two years and average that out anyway right so your last two years on your tax return that you did with the irs right we're going to look at those and we're going to average those out and then we're going to still take a percentage off of that especially if you're not w-2s but but self-employed now if you still argue that you're you're going to make more than that then I'm going to need to see, you're going to need to at least see, be in the first quarter. And then I'm going to project out to see if that even equals out to what you're talking about. And then at that point, mm -hmm. if it still doesn't equal out, I'm going to tell you, well, then give us a, a business plan of why you think you're going to get there. 
normally if you before you get to that point people just fall off but <laughs> but if 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 you still want to push that envelope at the end of it you're probably going to just 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 going to be no period we're going to just take the 2 years and and run with that and that's it Right. And, and did we talk about this? Because I know some people get a little confused. And shout out to uh, to Jacob, a member of the YouTube channel. He says, was this the female version of Batman Cabo? No, not, I won't even go that far <laughs> because she wasn't giving <laughs> advice for other people to do this silliness. Not that I've read in this indictment. She was doing it herself. So there's a difference between right. advocating for other people to do silliness and then you just do silliness on your own. So uh, shouts out to Jacob. But Remember about the averaging, because I want to make sure, because I wasn't sure if I, I heard you say it or not, but they like right. to see numbers go up or numbers flatline. They don't want to see no, numbers no, no, go no. down, right? So no, if, no, if no, you're no. Doing the average, it's called it's downtrending. One, yeah, yeah. If you got yeah. year one where you make 100,000 and then year two, you make 85, they're going to be like, you make 85. They're not going to take those <laughs> right. two numbers and average it. Now, if you make, you know, 100 and 100, it's like, okay, right, you make 100. Right. Or you make 100 and 200. They're going to be like, okay, you make about yeah, 150. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. 150, when right. when you trend down. When you trend down. So, so, so when you trend down, the, the next question I'm going to ask you is why do you have a downtrend and what happened for you to have that downtrend? Like, there was a lot of that during the pandemic, which is understandable because everyone was in that predicament right? right so a lot of people would say oh man my 2000 my 2020 tax returns it was the pandemic and you would be like okay i get that i get that but it there it can't be so bad you can't have made i don't know 250,000 and then 50,000 the next year just because of the pandemic and expect me to lend you 200,000 <laughs> or 150,000 you know it's not going to happen but they people do expect like that, that. People do expect that, and they expect that because they think, oh, man, my credit is great, and I, but it's more than just your credit. That's what I try to explain to people. It has to do with how much money, and there's a ceiling to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it, people, people get ridiculous. I'm going to finish reading this, and then we're going to go to the phone lines. Hey, y'all make sure y'all get these likes up. We got almost 800 people in here. Me and Orlando deserve at least 400 likes. There's, there's man, get those likes here, up. Right? 800 people in here. <laughs> we deserve at least 400 likes up here. We got people in the back. I'm going, I'm going to go to these phone calls, but y'all better get these likes up. So here, let, let, I'm going to finish. I'm, I'm, I'm about to read to you, Orlando, why mm -hmm. she lied about the job position. Okay. Okay. We're we about to get an understanding why the job position was lied to. So this is actual documents from the, the from the case, right? So you got the US versus Crow, right? So this is this is the case here. Okay, right? okay. This is why this is why she lied. So here we go. Says uh da, 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 da. here it says that you know in June 2004, Crow, which is Vicky, in 2004, Vicky, a resident of Denver, Colorado, sought to purchase a home in Denver. To do so, Vicky applied for first and second mortgages with Fieldstone Mortgage Company in the amounts of $155,550 and $27,450 respectively. All right. Here's, here's the thing. The applications for the mortgages, both of which were signed by Vicky, stated falsely, stated falsely, one more time, stated falsely that Vicky was employed by King Supers. I don't know what that is. King Supers, S-O-O-P-E-R-S. -O -O am, I, am I pronouncing that right? King Supers as a front-end manager earning $4,166.66 per month, okay? So she put that she was a front-end manager for King Supers. Guess what really happened, Orlando? It, it, any guess? Any any idea of what really went on? She said that she was making about forty two hundred dollars a month as a front end manager for whoever King Supers is. Do you have any idea what money she was actually making? <laughs> oh, Michi, Michi, asked zero. Me, she it's a it's a it's a grocery store. It's a grocery store. Okay, <laughs> it's a grocery store. <laughs> 
Okay, shouts out to Michi X. Thank you for uh, being in the chat. So yeah, it's a, it's a grocery store. She says that she was the front end manager of a grocery store making about $4,200 a month. Any guess, any guess of what job she really had and how much money she was really making? Any guess? Hmm, was she self-employed? Was she self-employed? Nope, nope, nope. 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 I don't know. What, what was it? All right, so she said that she was the front end manager and she was uh -huh. making about $4,200 a month. According okay. to the court documents, it says, in fact, right? In fact, however, Vicky was unemployed at the time she submitted the application. <laughs> she was making no money. She was making no money. I time. didn't think it was that bad. I didn't think it was that bad. I, look, I literally thought to myself, oh, no, there's no way that she's not making no money. She had to be making some money. No money. Now, here's the, thing. Here's, the, it, it, here's the other side of it. It says, although Vicky previously worked for King Supers, this grocery store, she used to work there. But she wasn't making forty two hundred dollars a month. Oh well, well that's she, easy at a grocery store. <laughs> she, was, she was making sixteen dollars and six cents an hour. That so, sounds about about right. That's corrected. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds that sounds about right. So that's why she had to lie about her position because one, she wasn't even working. That, that, that's number one. She she was unemployed at the time that she was seeking this loan. And two, when she did work for this place. She was making 16 bucks an hour, right? That's it. You know, I ain't trying to call her broke, but she wasn't making $4,200 a month at this grocery mm. store. So that's that's ultimately why she so, lied about her, her position. Hence her making up W-2s and all this other stuff. That's probably what yeah, she you, did. Yeah, you got to make, yeah, you got to be making up yeah, fake yeah. documents and, and yep, stuff yep, like that. Yep. So ultimately, I mean, it shows, yeah, mm, she, she mm, got sentenced mm. to five years after the five years of being in federal prison, she would have three years of supervised uh, lifestyle. She's just, you know, she's being supervised for three years, checking mm, in with mm, someone. Mm. So remember, people, all of this is because you're fudging numbers on paperwork to get stuff that you really don't qualify for, right? That's what ultimately happens. Now, as far as who Vicky is and whatnot, I, I don't know who Vicky is, right? Uh, yeah, I don't have any personal beefs with Vicky. I don't know who the hell she is. Maybe she served her prison time and, you know, she's now a fully functioning member of society. I have no idea. But the point is, this is what will happen to you when you put down false information. This is really what happens to you <laughs> when you have a scammer's mindset. This is where scammer mindset comes. Oh man, well, you know, you gotta hustle and get what you need to get, so you put no numbers down. No, 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 listen, she she was putting numbers down on, on paper so that she, and the Fed said that she was able to pocket $1 million out of mm. the 2.4 million that she would get, she pocketed about a million. She also had a little scam in here. I don't feel like fishing it out. But what she would do was uh, she would get the seller of the home to inflate the sales price of the home so that she would be able to get a loan for this higher sales price. And then apparently with the HUD reports, she would either show that some rehab company was paid to fix up the house, but she would pocket that money. Or which is even more ridiculous, the seller of the home would then give her the money. Listen, second, I got the money in my hand, player. I'm not I'm not giving you this money. If if on all paperwork it shows that you bought my house for two hundred and fifty thousand, <laughs> even though I was selling it for two hundred, and then you got a loan for two hundred and fifty, then I got the two hundred and fifty. Good luck on getting that fifty. So, uh, so you're telling me so she did all of that, mm -hmm. overinflated everything. Right. ripped off the bank right and then when the bank has to go into foreclosure and work out the loan she thinks the bank isn't going to spend money to come after her oh come on come on come on i mean it's con i mean come on man. that's it's common like sense scam scams like this are always boy, I tell short you, boy. term right you're you're a short-term hustler in your mentality when you do scam, like PPP loans, the people who are scamming with it, you're short term thinking. You gave the federal <laughs> government all your information. You think that they're not going to come back and make sure that you actually, you literally sign documents saying, hey, federal government, 
you have the right to double back and, and check if everything I told you is true. One of the oh, hardest, they will. yeah, <laughs> one of the hardest things for people to get is your tax records. Even if you are a part of the government, it's hard to get. You see how hard it was to try to get Trump's tax records. Oh yeah, right. It's 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 hard to get yeah. someone's tax records, even if you are investigating them for something that you have to really prove to a judge or whoever that you know these these tax right. records are so vital to your uh, investigation. Well, you already signed. If you got a PPP loan or an EIDL loan, you already said, "Hey, at any time, Tax. if you want to check my tax information, <laughs> go right ahead, because I need this money and everything that I'm saying is true and exact." And right, let's let's go to the phone lines. We got. I we started. Gotta... I started a business three years ago. Right, three years ago. <laughs> I'm good to go. All right. Uh, let's see. Here, let's see. Here. We got a caller from the three, four, seven area code. So just hold tight. Hold tight. I'm going to let uh, y'all get these likes up, and I'm going to make sure that everything is everything while I get the uh, phone lines together. So y'all get these likes up b before I go to this phone call. So hold Hi, I'm Mike Evans with more Money. Tell me, what do you know about more Money? Brother, all I know is I was here last night getting my taxes done, and today there's more Money all the way. You know what I'm saying? And how about you? In here yesterday, back today to get my check. This more Money stuff is real. I'm more Money for life. Out of slow money? Well, come to Mo Money, because we about that. Mo Money Texas, and once again, it's on, and I got the hookup. <laughs> Mo Money Texas, come down and see us, and you'll be glad that you did. At Mo Money Texas, you're more than just another number. This year, we're offering our 30-second refunds to go along with our next-day refunds. Come down and see us, and you'll be glad that you did. Continuing saga of Mo Money Taxes. Norfolk police are investigating the tax preparer and they have alerted the IRS about customers' complaints. Where's my check? That's the question all of these people want answered. The IRS is basically verifying to us that their, our money is here in their bank account. Friday, crowds gathered at Mo Money Taxes in Norfolk. On Granby Street, owner Mario Brady told us he printed 50 checks and 30 did not clear. The banks have refused to cash their checks saying that there is fake. I mean, that is unacceptable. Federal agents raided the headquarters of Mo Money Taxes in Tennessee this morning. You may remember Ted on your side traveled to Memphis for local Mo Money customers who claimed they didn't receive their refund. We continue to follow another developing story. New tonight, tensions continue to run high as customers wait for their tax returns that they say were not getting from Mo Money taxes. You can see the level of anger just a few hours ago at this Norfolk location off Brambleton. Angry customers who say they were promised refund checks and didn't get them broke windows and police were called to break up the angry crowd. That's just ridiculous. Marcus Eves, a former customer who says he filed his taxes with Mo Money in 2007, is worried about what we recently uncovered behind this Mo Money Tax Services location on Elvis Presley. This is wrong for, you know, files to be out here. This is people's personal information that anybody could have come by and gotten. Investigators are now looking into the discovery of thousands of documents thrown into three dumpsters behind the facility. Shortly after authorities arrived on scene and put up crime scene tape, so did Marky Granberry with Mo Money Taxes. Normally uh, we would have all files shredded uh, and, and uh, shredded or whatever but this we don't throw files in the garbage can i asked him what happened and why the documents were not shredded our lease was up on this operation so i assume the landlord went inside of the location and for whatever reason he decided to throw the files in a dumpster <laughs> all right all right so we got the caller on the line caller from a very very patient caller caller from the 347 area code. You're live on the air with Pocket Watcher with JT. Thank you for calling. What's going on? Yeah, you got calling. All right, you, you might want to get a little closer to the phone. I, I, I sound, like, sound like you're 10 feet away from the phone. Get a little closer to the phone. This is John calling. Can you hear me? Yes, go right here, John. Yeah, you got um, from New York, the reason I live in Charlotte, so I'm very familiar with this topic because um, I was actually in the, the mortgage business during like the financial crash. Mm -hmm. And this particular issue is very serious. I actually had, used to teach a mortgage ethics class. Mm, okay. And people get caught up in, you know, the excitement of trying to buy a home or whatever the case may be. But 
when you get caught and you will get caught, the consequences are severe mm -hmm. because some of the things that you used to be able to get away with, they actually tightened up on because I give you an example. I went to South Carolina State University mm -hmm. and two of the alumni that graduated from that school had a mortgage fraud scam where they were basically getting straw buyers, which is someone who's supposed to be buying the property, right. but never actually inhabits the property, mm -hmm. and were getting continuous loans. And then they were basically taking the money from escrow and just keeping the money. And what ended up happening is, when they all defaulted and this person never even lives in the house, they have to do an investigation. So it was two twin brothers, so they, they even contributed like I think half a million dollars to the school. Mm. So long story short, what happened is the person's credit is destroyed. Right. They're going to jail because they may have got like ten thousand dollars to say they're going to really live in the house, and they put in like I think up to like six different mortgages. And what used to happen is you used to be able to get different closing attorneys, and then close with different mortgage companies, and they would be none the wiser because they do it the same day. Oh, uh, okay. And the recording, mm. the recording wouldn't happen simultaneously, so it wasn't like. You know, different abstractors were going to the title, uh, to the to the courthouse, and bumping into each other. Gotcha. So now, what they did to make sure that doesn't happen, they have what's called MERS, mm -hmm. which is the Mortgage Electronic Registration System. Mm -hmm. So what that does is, once a Fannie Mae creates a loan, that there's an actual record that's tied to the borrower. So, or things like trying to fake pay stubs. They know pretty much all the predominant formats, whether it's ADP, right. paychecks, paychecks, yeah. Pay call. Right. Yeah, so it's not worth it, guys. Like, stay away from it because it's federal time. Mm -hmm. You got to do 85% straight up. Yeah. And you mm. may or may not get club fed. Yeah, right, right, right. You may do <laughs> right, maybe right, in a hard right. eyes lockup type stuff, man. Yeah, it's right. it's it's it's, it's not right. worth it. At the end of the day, it's absolutely mm. not worth it. Apparently, uh, based on this FBI report, there was like nineteen properties where she was either doing this or attempting to do this. It's it mm. it just gets reckless, man. Th thank you for calling in. I appreciate your uh, I appreciate professional it, experience in this. Man. It's ridiculous all right we got caller from the 210 area area code hold on real quick we got a question for orlando here so orlando we got a question from uh alonzo the uh alonzo hall the all-star advisor brother that's been on this channel many times oh Says, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah 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 orlando when a borrower borrower puts down ten thousand dollars or more, do you file a SARS? And uh, JT, can you talk about suspicious activity reports? Go ahead, uh, Orlando. No, I don't. I don't. You don't. I don't file. Okay. All right. So on the on the other end, okay, these these uh, suspicious activity reports. It's when they see a whole lot of cash. Right. If right. you deposit a certain amount of money in the bank or you have this huge transaction in cash, they want to know what's going on. It's some money laundering going on. How were you able to get this money? So then a report is filed and sent with the government on file. And if they want to, they can obviously look into the situation, start to track you and see exactly what's going on. So people who think they're being slick and oh, yeah, let me put this down with, you know, the money that I got from doing whatever illegal activity that I was doing. <laughs> I'm going to just, and then there's structuring. Let me talk about this too. For, for oh, you people boy. who think you're super, super smart. Hold on, uh, two, 210, I, I'm going to get to you. So for the smart people out here, it's like, okay, well, if they file a report for uh, uh, deposits or transactions of $10,000 or more, I'm just going to do it for $9,999, <laughs> Orlando. <laughs> oh, so, get out of here. I'm so smart. I can outsmart mm -hmm. the federal government. Well, that's referred to as structuring. You are on purpose making sure that all of your deposits are just under the threshold to file that report. That, too, will get you in trouble. So don't, don't, don't yeah, think yeah. you're being smart by doing it. Hey. And, and I want to add on to that is mm -hmm. that we don't do a report, but you have to still provide information. So we're going to, you know, you got to provide two, three months bank statements and then any big deposits have to be traced and all the other stuff. Right. So is, we're going to track it down. Right. We're going to track it down. Where the money come from? And real quick, Orlando, right. would it be OK if they got this money from a credit card? 
Like, oh, if, no. If, never. If, if that down never. payment, if that never. Down payment came from <laughs> a cash advance from a credit card or nope. they, they nope. turn their credit into cash by giving nope. themselves a, a, no. a That a defeats the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> it defeats the purpose like you know so we're gonna see we're gonna either see when we run your credit at the very end also mm -hmm. or we're gonna ask you where it came from and you have to prove to it where it where we where it came from and if you show us it came from a credit card that you automatically x i don't a know worse, how many times a worse lie say it Listen. wasn't from a credit card then you find out later that it was from a credit card Right. Our, our, what I try to tell borrowers is this is sometimes borrowers and I'm not, you know, it is what it is, but mm -hmm. they say, Hey, I want to buy a building. And then I say, okay, well, great. Well, show me your bank statements that you got the deposit. And what they have is mm -hmm. what they have is, is they have a bunch of money that they have in them in their closet or a mattress. They don't believe in banks. In bank. okay. And I, t and I tell them, well, your money's useless because, because <laughs> I can't trace it. It's useless. <laughs> You can't buy the building. It's over. <laughs> Unless you buy I'm it in sorry. cash. Hopefully yeah, you can buy it. You store you can buy it enough cash. where you can buy it 100% in cash and you don't need uh, the finance but, and then but, go right but, ahead. But here's the funny thing. The reason why they don't want to do that is, first of all, they don't believe in banks. They don't want to put their money into the, into the bank so that it can be traced. Right. They don't want to do that at all. But here's the thing. If you buy the the place and you're going to use some type of title, which most people do, they're not going to take a, a suitcase full of cash. You're going to have to wire it. Where are you going to wire it from? A bank. <laughs> how are you going to get that cash? In this check? How are you going to get that cash? In this check? From a bank? It's a people, I'm telling you, the short term thinkers, man, they think on the short term. Yeah. All right, we got caller from the 210 area code. You live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. Thank you for calling. What's going on? Yeah, I just wanted to comment, JT. Thanks mm -hmm. for uh, taking, you know, my call. But yeah. I'm in the business as well. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to add to the conversation is the unintended consequences for those that are coming behind these folks with the fraud. Mm. What I mean by that is this people always lament about the amount of documentation mm. that we have to get. But this is one of the reasons why. Hey, great, hey wow. listen, listen, I want to hear it. It's a Good great example. point. See if you can get a little closer to the phone, because I, I think I know where you're going, and I want people to hear exactly what you're saying, because you sound a little low. See if you can get a little closer to the phone, but go right ahead. It, is that better? Yeah. Is go, better? Yeah, mm -hmm. go right ahead. Yeah. So, so I'm just saying the amount of, you know, on a daily basis, I hear people complaining about why does the bank, why do we as lenders have to know so much information? Mm -hmm. And this is why. Um, and so, you know, the generational wealth thing of thinking about those younger folks coming behind you, right? you're not thinking about those people because you're making it harder for them. And if you look anywhere on the planet here in the United States, mm -hmm. we have the best mortgage products out here as far as you being able to leverage and things of that nature so i agree with you guys uh the amount of fraud and the sophistication that i'm seeing nowadays is just crazy i've mm -hmm. recently had some fraudulent irs tax transcripts i want to hear it story, it's, it's story time story time i want to hear what's what's some of the wildest stuff you've seen uh well you know uh uh, your co-host, Orlando, said it. I mean, the statement says there's no other information for this page, and then folks will go and add information to that page. I mean, that's just it's it's like, laziness. It's kind of like, yeah, it's laziness. I mean, I've seen, I've seen, you know, tax documents, mm -hmm. um, pay stubs, uh, people lying for other people saying that they're working. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, during, right. during 2020, mm -hmm. I've had people calling me. And if you're, if you're listening and you're talking to somebody on the phone and if you say, you know, am I on speaker? Am I being recorded? You might not want to say what you're going to say. Right? <laughs> when, uh, right. But, Whenever but, you have to qualify the statement, <laughs> hey, am, am I on speaker right now? Is, is, <laughs> you probably don't need to be saying crazy. this. <laughs> It's crazy, and not to not to. You asked Orlando a question about can you use credit cards and things like that you can't use credit cards, but 
Uh, Fannie Mae just came up with some guidelines earlier this year. You can use the reward points. The point I'm trying to make is this. Mm -hmm. If if people would be more adult, grown-ups, and just quit lying, um, I've not had a loan in almost 20 years with people that were forthright, even with challenge credit. Right. You know, like with the FHA products that couldn't get a loan. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't have to lie. You don't have to steal. And the last thing I'll say is just someone that has gone through 08 to 2010 and still in the business. Right. Um, one mm -hmm. of the things that I noticed is when you get into these cycles, the contraction, right, all of this business credit and things of that nature, nobody talks about when the bank just says, hey, we're shutting the credit lines off. Right. And so people need to understand that at some point in time, you ha cash flow matters. You have to be making money. Mm -hmm. And all of this three-card monster stuff that's going on, you're not going to see a lot of foreclosures now, regardless of what all the talking heads are saying, mm -hmm. because the underwriting guidelines have tightened up so much since 08, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so there's better qualified people in these homes and with the run-up of appreciation and things of that nature. If they get in trouble, you can sell. There, there's, there's less bad loans that are out here. But to your point, mm -hmm. and I'll end with this, just over the last month, I've had an audit where the investor that's trying to sell, you know, everybody's trying to sell their loans to the government at some point in time. Right. Freddie Fannie, so we convert them into bonds, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they're going back over a year. One case in particular, the uh, to, to, to net it out, we do verbal verifications of employments within 10 days of closing, right? Mm -hmm. So this was a nurse. Her employer said that she was employed. We did everything that we were supposed to do. A year later, when the investor that we sold our servicing rights to is trying to sell it to the government, they went back and audited it and found out that, in fact, when the employer said that this lady was employed, she had quit. She wasn't employed. And so there was down payment assistance that was associated with it. Right. They have to pay that back. And they're, and they're lucky they didn't get prosecuted. Right. And that's fraud. Oh, my God. All right, that man. Thank you for calling, man. That's that. That I think that's what people people need nope, to nope, nope. people need to hear this stuff, Orlando. I mean, it's it's, it's me. they do. Oh my God! It's, uh, listen, I I'm well aware that you people you have dreams, right? You have aspirations. There's stuff that you want in your life. The American dream is to be able to have you know home, nice home, white picket fence, all that stuff, right? But getting there through scamming is not going to help you in the long run. I'm telling you guys, it's not going to be the winning formula. And then when you look around, most of y'all broke anyway. Let, let's stop acting like, you know, like this is the part that kills oh, me. This is the part that kills me. We're in the, the age of this huge wealth uh, education, financial education, literacy, everybody's getting a bag, right? Everybody's getting a bag. You feel like you're left out. You go to your phone and you look through your timeline and all you see is people just bragging about all the money that they're making and what they're doing online and they're selling courses online or they're flipping property and they're doing all of this stuff. Everybody's bragging about all the money they make. But what does the numbers say? What does the number say? When we look at it and it shows that two thirds of the population live paycheck to paycheck. How, how can that be true? How can everybody on your timeline who's getting the bag, they're doing all these things, they're, 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 they're going to all these, these conventions where they're being taught how much money they can make. But two thirds of America is living paycheck to paycheck. And odds are you're most likely in the two thirds that's living paycheck to paycheck and you're not in the one third that's not right. Let's just base on probability. Right. Probability says most of the people on your timeline who are saying that they're making so much money and they're doing so great. They're lying to you. Right. Absolutely lying to you because the facts are what the facts are. And we're going to see very soon. When we are really neck deep into a recession, how profitable all these boss girls and boss guys are when we're this deep in a recession. Because everybody, all that, 
Everybody talks rich. We got we got a caller from 919. Give me one second here. Caller from 919. We're going to bring you up. Everybody's balling until it's time to ball. Right. Everybody's got the big money right. and all these things until it's mm-hmm. time. Like, you know, Orlando, we, we, we're in our offices. Someone walks in our office for a, a consultation or appointment or whatever, and they look the part. They look, look the, part. the part. Man, listen, they are from their heads to the bottom of their feet. They look like a million dollars. They mm-hmm. look like, listen, hey, I got I got everything that anybody who wants to be wealthy should have. But then when they actually hand over their documents, unless their documents Whoa. are fraudulent. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me make sure I'm mm-hmm. clear. Unless the documents are fraudulent, you look at the documents and, and the person's broke. They're living paycheck to paycheck. Paycheck to paycheck. The clothes that they bought and Mm -hmm. have on their back right now was probably purchased with a credit card. And that credit credit card's about two or three months behind the payment. Mm -hmm. Right? Like all this stuff. Maxed out. Right. What 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 are you doing all of this for? Like you're doing all of this work to try to make yourself look as if you're just so in command of your money. You make so much good money. You 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 you're flying to Miami every quarter and you're doing going to all this stuff. But the reality for is what? you're bro- you're broke. You're broke. You're broke. You, you got you, no you, money. You owe more in debt. No money than a saved. Bit of cash. Right. No, no money. No money saved. Zero. Nah, nah, nah. They, mm-hmm. they, they, they don't do none of that. Let, let's let's go to this call. We got <laughs> caller from 919 area code. You're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. Thank you for calling. What's going on? What's up, JT? What's up, Orlando? How's it hey, going? How you doing? Good, good, good. What's going on? Oh, man. I just wanted to just say I love your show. I appreciate <laughs> what your brothers are doing. And I just got to say this, man. Mm-hmm. All this boss bait, all these people that have money, it is all cap. <laughs> all cap. I'm a senior director <laughs> clinical operations for a biotech company. Mm-hmm. I make well over six figures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and let me tell you, I hang I hang out. I live in South San Francisco, mm-hmm. and I also live in North Carolina. Black people just front like hell. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable <laughs> how much they front, uh... how much money they they make. But my question for you guys was maybe a little bit for Orlando because I love your your talk on on real estate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, well, thanks, and, man. Um, so my situation is I'm here in South San Francisco. I also have an apartment in um, in Cary, North Carolina. I'm in trying to buy property, but I have not done it because the prices have gotten ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know, you already know. You already know in the Bay Area, it's crazy. Right. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just better to rent. I wanted to know when do you guys think the downturn? Downturn, I believe, is going to start like around September, October. When I think that's when the stock market is going to take the really the next big hit. Mm-hmm. But how long of the downturn do you think it's going to be for the real estate market? All right. Because I am looking to get into some really get into real estate a lot more real estate i i got a couple of questions for you before orlando answers your question so you're looking to get into real estate sure. you're waiting to see where the market goes couple of questions i got i know about how much money you make you talked about that what kind of debt do you have right now zero zero <laughs> good stuff student loans paid off mm-hmm. and, and check it out I've, I've got two master's degrees. I got a master's in biotechnology and I got an MBA. It took me 10 years to pay that junk off. Nice. And I got cash. Nice. I've been saving, I've been saving throughout all of 2010 mm-hmm. and since 20, two, since 2005. Dude, just saving, paying off my debt. My, my credit scores over 740 mm-hmm. 7, 748 actually um i'm not i got my I, it took me a long time <laughs> I, now, it took me a long time my only other question before yeah. i let orlando hit it is okay so great you you make a lot of money good money no debt we know that 
Uh, other question is, what do you currently have for any type of retirement investment, retirement savings? Are you participating with your employer's retirement plan? I max out my 401k. I've been maxing out my 401k since I, I started this business, dude. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'm 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 well educated on on these matters. I got an MBA, okay. so I understand the finance piece of it. Got it. So okay, perfect. Um, me, I'm on. I mean, I'm 38. I'm on. I'm on track to probably retire by like 52, 53. Mm -hmm. So. Right, hey, you, you answered all my questions, so you're not going to hear Orlando when you're on the line, so I'm going to let you go. Thank you for calling, and I'm going to let Orlando go ahead and uh, answer that question based on when do you think it's a good time uh, for him to buy? He's got he's got all the prerequisites that I would ask for him to have for, for buying. Right. So, so what do you think, right. Orlando? So this is my thing that with the whole buying now, buying, wait until, you know, it, it falls apart and whatnot. When you're talking about a house, it's different than when you're talking about investment properties. Mm -hmm. Investment properties are determined about determined by cash flow. What's happening with cash flow? And as we know right now, rents are high, 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 right? So right. so the cash flow is going to more than likely support wherever you're trying to buy, right? So you have to look at every deal as as exactly that a deal is it a deal are you making what are you trying to make on each and every deal so i never tell anybody to um, when it comes to rental properties to you know sit there and wait and try to time it and whatnot you're gonna have a very hard time trying to time it anyway so i would say it's on by a deal by deal basis and if you're if you are gonna wait then you know i mean the the best time would be obviously to wait till a recession hits and then try to figure it out then. But I, I, me personally, even as I'm looking for deals, I don't really, I'm not sitting here waiting around. A deal is a deal. Right. So, right, right. and this, and this is his personal home, right? I think he's getting, I, I think this might be personal. So, you know, obviously I don't, continue. I thought, I thought he, I thought well, he said is, it was, uh, his rental. He said, oh, he was looking for rental. He was looking for, he looking for rent, investment. Yeah. He looking for investment properties. Gotcha. Okay. Then right. He had, you, you, he needs to be actively looking for right. not waiting right. for the recession technically. And then yes. anyway, if he's actively looking for deals now, he can better gauge when the recession hits how good of a deal he oh, can yeah. possibly get, right? Because yeah. if you're not yeah. actively yeah. looking now, when the recession hits, you're still going to be thinking, okay, is this good or not? Here, so, yeah, here, he here, needs here, to actively be here, looking. Here, here's the thing, guys. When you are doing rental properties – I, I, I know you go online and you go on YouTube and you see these like triple million home runs that everybody, someone bought a property for a dollar and sold it for half a million dollars. Look, look those, those are needle in the haystacks. They probably works less than that. Like, right. like you have to go in there and crypto has really spoiled a lot of you thinking that a 9% return on your money is horrible. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> you they, know? Have, they have unrealistic unreal expectations on the returns that they should be getting on Man. these investments. Yeah, that's 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 clear. We got we got another caller. We got a caller from the seven seven three area code. Caller from seven seven three live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. Thank you for calling. What's going on? JT, JT. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to call in, and um, I want to say that I am secretly. Uh, you remember Miss Cleo, uh, the, 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 the scammer? The, Absolutely, uh, I know yeah, Miss Cleo. So I'm a, yes, I'm. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna say I'm Miss Cleo's brother, and I have a prediction. <laughs> okay. My prediction is, I have a prediction. Some people are gonna call it hate, but I'm just calling it a prediction. Mm -hmm. My prediction is, by holiday time of this year. Mm -hmm. One of these financial gurus in the community <laughs> will face a charge. Hey, listen, that's my prediction. If I had to put money, if I had to put money on it, I think you're right. I I think you're right. When and, when the full weight of what they've been teaching actually hits the fan, when 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 we see, and I, I expect there's probably over maybe 10 to 15,000 people out here who have been using these techniques to get these credit cards, these high limit credit cards, they're going to default on these credit cards. And when the government looks up and say, 
how many people defaulted in, on credit cards in a in a in a span of one month? How are these people all connected? What what, what were they doing? It, it, it might go down the way you think it is. Right. You know what? I called in um, maybe a week ago. Orlando was it Orlando was on the thing. It was um, Eli. Oh, man, I can't remember. What, what happened, happened to Common Sense? Eli, yes, yeah. Eli was there. And we and I and I said, you know what? Uh, when it came to uh, him, five hundred. I said I mm-hmm. thought he was from Chicago. I think <laughs> the the type of scamming he's doing looks real familiar. You know? <laughs> and and uh, I was speaking to a, a close friend of mine who mm-hmm. is one of the assistant state's attorneys here in Chicago, and they know who you know who, about this just because they be on YouTube too, right? Just casually watching or whatever, right? Right. And they were like, man, they like, man, it's going to happen. It's like, it's no way, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. They're like, the problem is, it was like, how are they going to feel once you have people like EYL who's going to have to make the decision? Are they going to testify because you openly and notoriously let Ooh. them continue on, on your platform mm. like this? It's like, now mm. that is going to be the real shakeup. Yeah, and that's, like, and that'd be people tough. going to say it's going to be like, it's going to be a huge domino effect that mm. it's going it's going to get ugly, you know? Right. No, nah, man, I, they, I agree. They steady going. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I don't know what it is. I have no idea what the vetting process is over there. And I thought, I mean, when I was talking to these guys, I was like, listen, man, uh, if, if y'all need some help from me, I'll help. You know, it's not it's not that hard man. of a deal to like like me and Orlando, we can hear fraud from a mile away. Like we, right, we, we right, know these right, things. Right. Like I understand these guys aren't, you know, uh professionals in the same way that uh, me and Orlando are. They don't they don't they haven't seen these things time and time and time again. So okay, mm-hmm. yeah, you didn't know, but you can't say you weren't warned. You can't say that we haven't always yeah, I, said you guys need to get a little tighter on some of these guests that come on and they're promoting these courses and these these financial strategies to help you get over on the system. That's fraud. But man, I, but I'll be damned. You, I could take a kid in freshman year of high school and say, "Hey, yeah, you know, put down on this job application at Foot Locker." At your last job, you made two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Right. Like, no, that don't seem right. You know. Like, like, come on, man. Like, like, uh, I had no, like, no one jumped up and said, "Hold on, bro." Because to me, you will have more cachet and have far more equity in your brand by challenging some of this stuff on air. You know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, who am I? But I, I thought one of them. What was it? I, was it uh, Rashad? Or one, of them, one of them supposed to have been a, a financial planner, advisor, or something before? Yeah, let me let me explain that. Some people some people don't really understand uh, how different roles within the financial services industries work. Okay, and this is not a shot at anybody who I'm about to name and job positions that I'm about to name. Everything that I'm saying is factually true, right? So if what I'm about to say hurts someone's feelings. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at the fact that, you know, what I'm saying is true and you have a misconception of who you are. So here we go. So within the world of financial services, there's different positions. But generally, I'm going to break it down to three to help with the conversation. There are people who sell insurance. These are insurance agents. They work for insurance companies and they sell the product of a insurance policy to customers. They very often refer to themselves as financial advisors. Even though they're not really giving any real financial advice, they legally can't give financial advice because they're not licensed to give financial advice. They are licensed to sell insurance. So those are insurance agents. Then there are brokers. A broker is someone that takes a a exam and they are then licensed to sell you a stock or bond or mutual fund. These brokers also like to refer to themselves as financial advisors, even though still they're not giving anybody any advice, right? They're selling you a product, a stock, bond, a mutual fund. So there's a lot of people in this space that will call themselves a financial advisor when they're literally not licensed 
to give advice, right? So then you've got this other group, which I, I could group into investment advisors and financial planners, right? We are actually licensed by the 1940 Investment Advisor Act, meaning we are actually licensed to give advice, right? In order to be a certified financial planner, understand what you have to do. You have to one, have a bachelor's degree. You have to also have an education on a college level in financial planning. Then you have to pass a board exam proving that you know how to give people good financial advice. You also have to commit yourself to ethical standards that basically say, and I know this may seem radical, you have to commit yourself to say, I'm going to put the interests of my client before mine. Meaning if I'm going to give my client advice, that advice is going to be 100% focused on what's best for them and not what's best for me. Now, the other two in this group that I gave, people who sell insurance, people who are brokers, they have almost none of these requirements. They don't have to have a college education. They don't have to, if they do have a college education, it doesn't have to be in finance, right? They don't have to have any type of ethical standards that put the, uh, the best interest of the client before them. So that's why it can get so kind of confusing when someone says, hey, I'm a financial advisor. Then you scratch your head and say, well, if you're a financial advisor, why didn't you know this? And why didn't you know that? There's a good chance that that person is not a certified financial planner. They're probably an insurance agent, which shout out to all the insurance agents. You are absolutely needed. It's an honorable job, but you're not licensed to give financial advice or you are a broker, a stock broker. You have a series seven license, right? Okay, shouts out to you. We They're somewhat needed, not as much in the past because now you can just go on the app and buy a stock. So whatever, but still, it's a it's a profession, respectable, but you're not you're not an investment advisor. You're not a certified financial planner. So that's why that's why it can kind of get confusing when people say, "Hey, you know, I do this. I'm a financial advisor," but at the end of the day, it's like eh, you don't. Yeah, it it doesn't show. So that's mm -hmm. that's why it kind of happens like that. Does that does that make sense? Is that kind of clear how that how that works out? That makes all the sense in the world. And I just want to say thank you because. This is the information that you provided and in the context of, I know this is entertaining for a lot of people, but the edutainment value mm -hmm. is what really matters. And that's why I subscribe to people like yourself, the lead attorney, Orlando Minor, and so many others. And, yeah. and, and why I have a YouTube channel, so it, it kind of helps you or me as well to say, you know, I appreciate it. And, you know, thanks, Seth. I appreciate hey, you. That's what's Hey, before you go, shout out your, your, your channel. What's the name of your channel? My name is David Harvey. My channel is David Harvey Official, and I, I provide. Um, I, I talk about some of the uh, the gurus as well, uh, uh, the, the financial literacy as well, but ethical, 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 ethical. I review credit cards, all types of different things. So, okay, that's what's uh, up. That, man. That's pretty much it, man. That's what's up, man. Thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, we got this super chat, and then I'm going to take the call from caller from the 336 area coast. So caller from 336, uh, get ready. But let me uh, <laughs> read this super chat. It's from GA Text Man again. Our brother says, uh, uh, were you guys prepared when the market crashed back in 2008? Any losses? Well, me and, me and Orlando are extremely similar in this situation. I'm going to go first. Yeah. But yeah. uh, explain what happened. So in in my case, listen, man, I graduated from college in 2000. Uh, well, undergrad. I graduated from undergrad in 2006. Right. I ain't had no money. I So there wasn't nothing. There was no loss. I had no money. I had no investments. Uh, there was no quote unquote loss. And I can tell you right now, I was absolutely not prepared, not prepared whatsoever. The only thing I had, I had. Uh, well, obviously, I had student loan debt. Uh, but you know, I was blessed to be able to work for my father. So worst case scenario, I wasn't going to lose a job. You know, I, I was going to have a job, but because of the way the economy was, business got a little slower and I mm -hmm. wasn't, you know, wasn't making the same amount of money that I was making before. 
but I was blessed to be able to be in a position where I did not lose my job and I was able to get through and survive and continue to go to school, went to night school and, and kept going and paid for a lot of that stuff out of pocket. So I didn't take on a whole lot of more student loan debt. I just paid out of pocket because that's really the only option that I had. So one note, I was not prepared. Uh, no real losses because I didn't have anything. I, I didn't have anything. <laughs> what, what about you, Orlando? Yeah, yeah, same thing. I had just got out the Air Force, and I was going to school. So I didn't have anything. Like, so, yeah, I'm in the same boat as you. I, there, there was nothing to be prepared for because I, <laughs> what was I going to use? Nothing. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so all you new people who just came on, we had about a thousand people here. And if you're, you're you just came on and say, hey, I thought we was talking about uh, uh, Vicky Dillard and the, and the fraud. Let me give you a quick summary while before I go back to these phone calls. So we were able to you know take a look at what the FBI had on file about this whole case with Vicky Dillard. Why is it relevant is because she received a sentence of five years federal mm. time. And then three years supervised uh, supervision at when she got out because of not taking a gun into a bank and, you know, taking money out the bank. It was because she was lying on forms. Now, this is based on a court case. Now, if she wants to say she wasn't lying on the forms or whatever. Well, congratulations. Say what you got to say. I'm going to say what the court said and what you were found guilty by a jury of your peers said you did this. So right. don't say that. Hey, hey. The Vicky Army, the Talk Black to Me Army, if y'all want to jump down my back, listen, y'all need to first get the record corrected from the federal government, and then I can correct my statement. But I'm basing it on what the <laughs> federal government the federal government basically uh... was saying that she was lying on the loan applications. One of the craziest things was she claimed that she worked for a grocery store making about $4,200 a month, when in fact she was unemployed. She had no job. She wasn't making any money. So she lied about mm -hmm. how much money she had. She lied about how much debt she had. She also lied about the use of these properties, saying that it was going to be used by uh, the borrower for a primary residence when it seems as if this was going to be more of a uh, rental property situation. The right. scheme had about $2.4 million that she was able to get. But obviously, some of that money went to the people who sold the homes. She ended right. up pocketing around $1 million. Here's another key point that I want people to understand. She stopped doing this scam in 2006. Wasn't even that long. She started in 2004. She stopped in 2006. So it was two years she was doing this. The cops didn't start knocking on the door, right? The indictment co didn't come down until 2010. Four right. years when she was done. Like, I'm sure she thought, hey, I'm good, right? Like, I'm Watch sure, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> Vicky was thinking to herself, listen, I'm good. I got a million dollars to the good. It's been four years since I even did this scam. So no one's coming for me. But mm. knock on the door, indictment in 2010, trial in 2011, and then she was sentenced in 2012. Five years with three years of supervision after she serves the five years. Ooh. All because of what? Not because of a gun, not because of a knife or a hammer or some sort of strong arm uh, robbery. Because she was fraudulently putting down how much money she made on loan applications, how much debt she had on loan applications, and the use of the funds that she received for the loan. That is what got her fed time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, y'all can call me lame and all that all you want. I'm not doing fed time, player. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing fed time. Orlando, I mean, maybe you can do it. You maybe you you tougher than I'm me. I'm not doing I I'm not doing no time. <laughs> <laughs> no Zero time. time no, no state time. No time. <laughs> no time. Man. They ain't doing nothing. Shit, I'm, right. I'm crossing T's, dot dies. Don't don't put me in that group. Right. All right. So Super we got, square. You got to call it from 336 and call it from 313. 336, you are up right now. You're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. Thank you for calling. What's your question? Hi, JT in Orlando. This is um, Dion. I'm calling from Greensboro, North Carolina, 
And I just wanted to add something to the conversation. Mm -hmm. My father and my brother run a small construction business and we build homes. Mm -hmm. I've also seen people who lose whatever little money that they had because they're trying to project something that isn't real and they're lying on paperwork that doesn't catch up to the end. Mm -hmm. So quick little story. Mm -hmm. I built my house last fall. I closed in October. There was a couple building next to me. Mm -hmm. So they had some things that they wanted that were kind of outside of the usual purview, right, as far as price range. Mm -hmm. But they're like, no, it's fine. We'll pay the additional cost. So as they're ordering things and my father's giving them the difference between this is what we have in the budget and this is what you want, they're paying for it. What we thought was cash up front, right? Uh Turns out they were charging up additional credit cards thinking that it wasn't going to be caught because they had already been, quote unquote, pre-approved. So when it comes time to close on their house, right, right, mm-hmm. <laughs> their credit, of course, gets ran again. Right. They no longer qualify, and they didn't have any money saved. So we had to then sell the house to another couple who then gets it for a steal because they're not paying the increased cost mm-hmm. of those additional items. So in the oh. end, like, look, in math class, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Right. It might take right. longer than you want. But you're not a failure if it takes you longer to get what you want. In the end, it just doesn't pay trying to project something that's not real. It's just it doesn't pay. Great, great 100%. point. Great point. Thank you for calling in. That that that's Thank you. such a good point. All of this fake it till you make it. Listen, Orlando, I didn't go to fake it till you make it school. I, I don't I. know. <laughs> I don't know where you kids learn this from. Where is the fake it till you make it school? It's I think it's it, Instagram. It, <laughs> Orlando, I I rather enjoy telling people I ain't got it. I love to tell right. people I ain't got it. I ain't got it. Nope. Sorry, I ain't got it. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with that? I, I I don't care if someone the person who thinks I'm broke, I probably have three times the net worth they got. Not mm. not to not to try to big bank little bank someone here, but but in, in real time, anyone who say oh. Look look at the car JT drive. Look at the clothes JT wears. Man, he ain't got no real money. I probably have two to three times the net worth mm. of that person who says that. Right? Mm. Because I don't I do not live my lifestyle based on trying to impress other people. The 100%. only people, the only people who matter in this situation of how I spend my money is my wife and my kids. Oh, they're the, they're the look, only at one. look at that. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. And I can, t- I can tell you right now, the only debt that I have is my mortgage. Paid off my student mm. loan, paid off everything, cars, all that stuff. When I buy a car, I buy it in cash. So, JT, right. so you, so, so what if you want to buy a BMW that costs like $60,000? I don't. I don't buy it. I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but you, of course, you, you out there, you're driving a Range Rover, you're driving a BMW and all that, and it looks real nice, 30 to 40, 50, 60, 80,000 dollar cars and stuff like that. But you got that car now. I don't have a car now. Only, only thing that costs, for my car, car insurance, gas. Cars paid off. That's it. Only debt payment I have is my mortgage. Think about the stress you you people have. Real talk. I'm you you can't lie to me because you people pay me, right? You pay me $450 an hour for a financial planning consultation. Don't don't try to lie to people online. When you guys pay me for a consultation, you tell me how much money you have. You tell me how much debt you have. You tell me about your budget or really your lack of having a budget. So you either don't know where your money is going or you're spending money on credit cards to make up the difference. I know you're broke. It's okay. I know you're broke. You can keep lying to your friends and your family and the people who follow you on Instagram. I know you're broke. The question is, what are you going to do about it to change, right? Mm. All of the people who you think are impressed by your timeline, when, when when the sheriff is knocking on the door for your eviction or when the repo man is backing up to your car, they're not going to help you. N- none of the people who are hitting like 
on your pitches are going to be there for you when the ish hits the fan and you can't nope. make all of these debt payments that you need to make. Nope. They're not going to be there for you. So if they're not going to be there for you to help you out with all the debt that you have, why get it in the first place to impress them? <laughs> what? What's the point? What, did, what is what, the point? What, 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 what is the point? <laughs> what are you doing this for? Just, just live within your means. And it's hard you, for some people, man. It's so hard for them. So some people it is hard. They just like, well, I got to show out. It's boring. That's what I somebody gonna tell you. <laughs> I don't understand why a man who makes forty five thousand dollars a year wants to live a sixty five thousand dollar a year lifestyle. You don't deserve a sixty five thousand dollar lifestyle when you make forty five thousand. You know what you deserve? You deserve a forty five thousand dollar a year lifestyle. Live mm. that lifestyle. Live the lifestyle that you earned. Because right here, right now, from Pocket Watching with JT, if you are unhappy with the lifestyle that you have based on the amount of money that you make, the only person that you have to blame, nine times out of ten, of course, someone's going to throw some weird situation where it wasn't they fought. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm sure that's you. You're like the one person who wins the lotto. Good, good luck with that. But for most of you, under the sound of my voice, your financial situation right now is a direct resort, a resort based on your choices right the things that you've done the way you spent money the choices you made that's why you are where you are financially and the way that you're going to get out of it is by changing your actions when you change your actions your financial situation will also change there's a there's a little advice for you a little free advice all right so we got called we got two callers from 313 so i don't want people to get confused here we got two okay. callers from 313. The first one I'm going to is 3137. So if you have your phone number starts 3137, I'm about to hit you up. If it's 3134, you're going to be next. So caller from Good 31, old Michigan. 3137, you're live on the air with Pocket Watcher with JT. What's going on? Hello. Hello. Um, I have I have a question. Shoot. And I'm going to just throw a scenario out at you, right? Go ahead. So my, so my cousin is new to starting his financial journey. Mm -hmm. and he's looking to buy a car. So he's just looking at all these financial literacy videos online or Instagram. Okay. So we came across one that said, if you want to, if you make money in your business, let's say you make $500,000 in your business legally. That's but a, you don't want to pay taxes. That's a really that's a really good right? business. But go ahead. Okay, you don't want to pay taxes on that. So you know, with the tax, with the tax um, influencers on Instagram, they're going to tell you to write everything off. Of right? course, yeah, <laughs> you, can't go out, you can't go out and finance and get mm. loans and get a house and all this because you didn't wrote everything off, even though you got a good business. Right. right. It looks like you're right. making no so, money. Yes. Zero. Oh. oh. Okay, so here, here's where it comes in. Mm -hmm. This person said, if you want to finance and get a house, show that you made $500,000, go get the loan from the bank, and then amend your tax returns in eight weeks after you got the loan and the, uh, and the house and everything, uh, and then write everything off. So now you basically... Kill two birds with one stone. So what would you say to that? <laughs> All right. Yeah. What, what would I say to that? Okay, God. point number one, what I would say to that is the person who's abdicating this is an idiot. The person who's abdicating this, if I had to bet money, is not licensed to represent people before the IRS. They're probably also not licensed to give any real financial advice because ethically mm -hmm. speaking, this person is an idiot. Okay? You no, 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 no. This person is a licensed tax accountant. Why? 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 Hold on. Why? Why, why do we have to do this? Why, why, <laughs> why do we have to do this? Uh, All right. Story horrible. time. Story time. Real quick. Story time. So, a while ago, probably over over a year ago, I, I did a video. Um, I did a video about an accountant who was. Uh, getting a little fast and loose with the advice that they were giving. 
and and basically what ended up happening was um they 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 ended up hitting me up and they was like hey listen bro um i understand what you're trying to do and the issue is i know what i was saying was a little off right i'm uh, i'm trying to make the story somewhat uh short i'm not trying to make it long but basically what the brother hit me up he said listen i know the things that i was saying was extreme and i know practically uh, the average person can't do the things that i'm saying the issue is it's extremely hard to get people's attention on social media trust me i know I know I've got, even though I've got almost 60,000 subscribers here on YouTube, I know how hard it is to get people's attention on social media, right? And basically what the brother said, he said, listen, I'm, I got to get people's attention or you know, the business ain't going to do what the business needs to do. So yeah, I might say something that's a little off, but when I actually talk to the people, when I actually get them in my office or I do a Zoom call with them, I explain to them the pros, the cons, the likelihood that they can do it or not. So just know that when I'm actually talking to the person, I give them the good advice. But if I say something in a in an Instagram post or something short, just know I'm doing that for marketing, right? So 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 that's what the person said. But ultimately to me, I'm like, listen, bro. None of it's good. Like if I have to market to you in a slick way, knowing that, hey, you really can't do this or you really shouldn't be doing this. I mean, you got to check your ethics at that point. At that point, you got to say, is the money worth it if I have to lie to you? Because basically what you're kind of doing, you're doing a bait and switch. I'm telling you, hey, yeah, what you could do is you can say that you make all this money on your tax return. And then after you close, just do an amended return and that that you can't. I mean, doing that one is unethical. Two, there's also different things in place where, and Orlando can probably speak to this too. The lender's gonna look like, hold on, you said that you made this. Now you're going back and saying that you didn't make this. What's going on? To me, I think that's unethical. And there's also some legal issues when it comes to that. But I, I, I'm gonna let Orlando kind of take 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 that part of it. I mean, what do you think if someone if someone came to you? For for uh, funding and for whatever reason, this person then uh, goes back and they amend that tax return. What do you think? You mean if if they amend their tax returns after we close on the loan? Right. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the 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 problem with that though is that you sign all this documentation, right? You sign all this documentation, and you you sign your name on you x the boxes and say all of this information is true, and you will not go back and change it and all that oh, other oh, stuff, oh, right? No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me that people <laughs> sign? Listen, people. I know this. I'm just, I'm just being rhetorical. Are I, know, you I, telling, know, I know. Are you telling me? That when they fill out these documents stating how much money they make and how much debt that they have, they, they have to actually write down that they're not going to go back and change what they said? <laughs> yes, Are you that kidding? is the case. <laughs> so you, you put yourself in that situation. If you go go ahead and do that, then what's going to happen is, is like, like the caller has previously said, is first of all, the loan's going to get called. You have to come up with all of that money up front. Immediately. Like, <laughs> Immediately. Understand. Give understand me my means. money now. Yeah. <laughs> and, hey, if, if you don't want no problems, you need to come up with the rest of my money on that loan right now. And you know they don't have it. And they you don't know have it. it. You know they, they don't have it. it. We want the money they got right it. now. Right I want now. it right now with all the interest and the penalties and everything <laughs> on there. I want it now. Prepayment penalties, everything on it. Give me my money now. And then after that, which you don't, which you most people won't have, then we're going to go through investigations and go to court. And you know what happens in the situation we're talking about right now. <laughs> right. Lying. So, yeah. Listen, if you got to lie to get something, you really don't. You're not supposed to have it. I, I don't know how much more I can say. I sound like an episode of like Sesame Street or something. If you have to lie to get something, that means you don't deserve it. How about you actually mm. do whatever the thing it is you need to do to qualify yourself for something? Then you, it's like the person who lies <laughs> on that job application. It's like, yeah, I can do this, this. I know how to operate a forklift and all this stuff. Then you get the job and you're sitting in the forklift like, 
I don't know how to work with that. I'm probably going <laughs> to murder somebody in this front lift. Like, what's the point? See, see, this is the thing that I think most people don't understand. People think that as soon as they close on a loan, a bank doesn't look at that. That's it. We, it's over. We, we no longer, it's over with. We ain't no longer looking at the documentation. We're not going to check up on you. We're not going to do anything. We just done. You you passed the test. You got past us. You got one on us, right? Yeah. That's what they think. <laughs> but what people don't understand is just because you don't get notified don't mean we didn't check. We checked. We just didn't say anything because everything was fine. But we do background stuff, randomly checking, drive drive checking, mail, making sure that mail is coming to the house, all that type of stuff. It's random, but you could be the lucky person who get caught. You get, you get caught up. Right. Yeah. Ridiculous. All right. So we got caller from the other 313 area code. So if you got 313 area code and you're on hold, I'm talking to you. So call it from 313 area code. You're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. Thank you for calling. What's going on? Oh, what's going on, Michi? Oh, we, we can't hear him. Oh, yeah, I can't. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't hold on. hear him. Hold on, real quick. We got, we got, Me we got Michi X on the line, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all couldn't hear her before. Michi, go right ahead. Okay. I was just calling. I wanted to say something really quick about um, Vicki Dillard. Okay. I see people in the chat who are saying things like, oh, well, if she did her time, then what's the problem? Mm -hmm. So I want to add something else to this conversation. Sure. It's not the fact that she did her time and she went to jail. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask you a question that you can look through that paperwork you were talking about earlier and either verify or say it, it sounds like some bullshit to me, right? Okay. Um, basically, she told everybody that the paperwork you're showing because plenty of other people have shown it that mm -hmm. that is fraudulent paperwork right that those documents have been altered that she didn't do any of those things she claims that she went to jail for being a political activist and she what? was fighting major companies on wall street and they set her up now this came out her own mouth so I'm just saying, is, it, is there any way that that paperwork, I mean, is, is, is there any truth to that? I just want to throw that out there because it's not that she went to jail or she did something in the past. It's that she's lying <clears throat> she's, about it. Okay. And that's that's the thing. Mm. See, and, and so I just wanted to throw that out there for all the people. That's what the problem with it is. She okay. won't even admit what she's done. All right. No, the great, great point. See, I was I was unaware of this. I was assuming, and it, you know, this shows you what happens when you assume. I was assuming that, you know, she openly admits yeah this is what happened i served my time now i'm on to a new thing i'm, I'm leading my life correct if she is mm. publicly trying to state that she was set up because that's what that's what it sounds like to me she's trying to state that she was set up mm -hmm. by the government and she didn't do these things listen people well, number one vicky dillard I, I don't even know who she is but i can tell you this much she's not important enough for the federal government to do all this work to set her up. Like that's 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 <laughs> that's number one. Like there's there's plenty of other people who's doing things in, who, who's doing things for black people who would probably be a higher target for the federal government than a 2010 Vicky Dillard, right? I know she's probably more active now since you know with YouTube and stuff like that, but 2010 Vicky Dillard wasn't on anybody's radar to be getting set up by the federal government. That's point number one. Point number two, the federal government, they don't play around when it comes to documentation when it comes to their court cases. They have all the documents that she filed. So when it comes to the, like these HUD reports and these closing statements, how can the federal government doctor them when there are several sources where you can go to to get a copy of them, right? Did I'm sure she's not showing people, well, here, these are my actual documents that say this, and these are the documents that the federal government, she can't say that. These things, like, like the report said, her signatures are on all these documents. It's easy to go to her employer to find out when she worked at this grocery store. She, she, <laughs> it's easy to go to the uh, the grocery store too, or go to her W twos to see how much money she actually was making. She claimed that she was making forty two hundred dollars a month as a front end manager. She was never apparently a front end manager. 
And during the time when she was applying for the loan, she didn't even work there. And when she did work there, she was making about 16 bucks an hour. The, Come on, all man. of these things, th hold on, just think for a second. All of these things that the federal government would have to do to set her up and to set her up to do what? To serve five years? <laughs> what are we on? Just listen. Come on. Come on now. <laughs> Anyone who believes that she was set up, you're not fully using your brain. Why would they do all of this stuff to set up one that no shot at, at Vicky? I don't know Vicky. No shot at her, but to set up a nobody. She's come on, let's 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 be real. Vicky Dillard in 2010 is a nobody. Now she can maybe she claims that, that she was a community activist, but on the national scale, she was a nobody. Hell, I still don't know who she is. She's not like Farrakhan or Jesse Jackson or or, or, or it, she's not someone who's a big profile that you would assume the federal government would be trying to set up. That's 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 point number one. And if they did set her up, set her up for what? For five years? She got, she had a million dollars. All of this money is trackable, people. Even if she, even if they say that the documents were wrong, like the, the federal government uh, put, presented documents that she didn't really sign or she didn't say, we can track the money she did have the million dollars. You can see how the money exchanges from banks and the lending institutions and her bank account. So, so Michi, thank you for calling. If there's any more info that you want to give, but yeah, listen, there's no way, absolutely no way that um, she was set up. There's no way she was set up. I, my intelligence refuses to allow me to believe that a woman was set up by the Fed, not only the FBI, this was a joint task force between the FBI and the U.S. Postal Service. Vicki Dillard in 2010, hell, Vicki Dillard today is not that big of a profile that would warrant such a mm -hmm. huge cover up to do what? To serve five years? Get out of here. Get out. And like, what was it? Right. Right. If they're going to set you up, you're you doing life. They're trying to get you off the streets for life. Hell, it's easier to just get rid of you. Like, why, why, why would they do all of this? It's easier just to, if you're going to that <laughs> level of conspiracy theory, it, it would be, think about all what has to, think about the, the, the attorneys that has to be paid, the, the, uh, the accountants that have to be paid, all of the agents that have to be paid. If the federal government's going to do all that, I'm sure it costs them all hundreds that money. of thousands. Hundreds of thousands of dollars to do right. this. The, the, I'm not even talking about the conspiracy. I'm just talking about the actual court costs and the investigation. Like literally, just the just to investigate her for this crime, it probably was somewhere around a hundred thousand dollars. When Easy. you when you when you account Easy. for all of the payroll of all the federal agents and employees that were a part of this investigation, probably a hundred thousand dollars. I know dudes on the street that can that you can pay five thousand dollars to merc somebody. Like you think the federal government doesn't do cost analysis on things like this? <laughs> What's the point of paying people a hundred thousand dollars to set up this big activist for five years when you can get Ray Ray on the corner for five stacks to murder somebody? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm 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 going up. It's just it's just so stupid. It's just so, it's so stupid. No, Vicky conspiracy was theory. Not, it was not set up by the federal government. If anyone has any type Thank of you. proof of anything like that, I would love to see it. But I'm I believe she was defending herself when I looked through the documents. It said it says pro se, so it looks as if at some point she had an attorney, and then at some point she was she was defending Represent herself. herself. So oh, that already shows something. Something's crazy. But yeah, Michi, thank you so much for calling it. Is there anything else you want to add? I just want to say, yeah, I just want to add this too that I want people to look at that and look at her her record because just mm -hmm. like she didn't have any job at all, but on paper she made it look like she had all the job in the world. Right. She also sells spiritual mm -hmm. classes, and I just want to sell something to dumb people, right? Receipts like you do, you bring receipts. I'm going to mm -hmm. give people some receipts, and you can go look it up. A year ago, Vicki Dillard was a Muslim, and now she is a spiritual guru. 
So a guru is somebody who is an expert at something. And I'm just saying that I think that's all the proof or receipts that anybody needs. You can go back a year ago or less, and this woman was a Muslim. But now, and before that, a year before that, she was a Christian. But now she's a spiritual guru and selling people classes online, and she's selling them magical coffee that has been chanted over that will change their life. So I just want y'all to keep all of that in perspective and put it all together. That I'm, I'm going to just leave it with that and throw that out there because people in the chat seem to, to really fall for this, this slowness, as she would say on her show. And like you said, they just don't think with their damn brain. People have been putting this information out, and I'm glad that you have done it because you huh. don't have a dog in the fight nah. the way. See, I don't like Vicky. We have personal beefs because I know the way this woman is. Uh -huh. I've known her in real life. She messes with everybody's money. But when me and other women have come out mm -hmm. and showed these same documents, she tried to excuse it away. But see, you don't have a dog in the fight. So nah. I'm glad that with your expertise, you have come up here and set the record straight. So right. with that mm. said, I, that's all I wanted to I wanted to call this back. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Michi. Michi, Michi X is in the building ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for calling yeah th listen th come on come on let's uh, let me just speak for a second to the people who may be watching this live or on the replay and you think that vicky was set up by the federal government let's just let's just use just basic logic for just 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 a few moments just basic logic here all right so you have all these other people who are going around this country doing things that you would consider are for the culture, they're uh, activists, and they're doing all of this stuff. All right. Back in 2010, you're telling me that the federal government said, with all the people that we need to control, because remember, I'm, I'm, I'm talking from the perspective of the people who think that the federal government is, is, is going to set someone up. All the people that we can pick to set up, to get them off the streets, we're going to pick a woman in Denver, Colorado, who 90% of the population have never heard of before in their life. Just, just think about this. Not, not Farrakhan, not Jesse, not, not, not uh, Al Sharpton, uh, not uh, Benjamin Crump, not, not, not any of the people who have a national platform. No, 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 no. We're going to get someone who is local to Denver, Colorado. And we all, we all know how Denver, Colorado is a hotbed for revolutionaries, right? Clearly, Denver, Colorado is where revolutionaries are made. Okay. They're going to dedicate at least, bare minimum, $100,000 worth of man hours, right? Actual salaries that they have to pay out to... Uh, you know, government attorneys, government accountants, just agents, all this stuff to get this woman who's in Denver, Colorado, off the streets. And how long do they get her off the streets? They get her off the streets for five years. Five, five years. Like, that's not, that's not even close to being like, like. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's, it's not worth it. Hundreds of thousands of dollars to get someone off the street for five years. If I spend a hundred, if I want someone to go away and I spend a hundred thousand dollars, they ain't coming back. <laughs> and I, I'm no gangster. I'm no killer. I'm just a guy that likes to watch The Godfather, Goodfellas, you know, Minister Society. I've seen so many movies. If I put up $100,000 to get rid of somebody, they better stay gone. They better stay <laughs> gone. They're not coming back. Just, they just Five years. Five, five years. years. Five years. Five hmm. years. Come on, people. Like, let's, 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 oh, let's use our brains, people. Let's, let's just use our brains. All right, we're we going to wrap this thing up. Y'all got me hot. Y'all got me hot. We're going to wrap this thing got up, Got JT man. going on. Going on. <laughs> Listen, we, we, we got over a thousand people in the chat. When I get off this live, if we don't have 500 likes, man, listen, y'all got to support the content. Y'all watching it? You, 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 right. You, 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 you got to hit that chat. like. Hit the like Talking. button. Why? 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 It costs nothing. Important? Why is hitting the like button important? It's important because when you like this con uh, content, that means the the algorithm's gonna say, okay, well, if John likes this content, 
and John watches the same thing as Jack, then we're going to recommend this con uh, this content to Jack. That see that way the channel grows, and as the grows. channel grows, me and Orlando, we can do more stuff. We can present right. more stuff. Right. That's that's how this thing works. That's how it works. Hit the like button, people. We have over a thousand. Bare minimum, we should have 500 likes. We will be back. I'll be back this Friday with another show. What is it going to be on? You'll see. Go check out <laughs> my, my Instagram because on Instagram, I kind of preview the next show that I'm going to do. So Friday at around 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, I will be doing a show. And I'm trust me, you want to see this show. Come and check it out. But hit the like button. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter to see what's going on. Orlando, let them know where they can find you. Yeah, please um, go to my channel, Orlando Miner. We're talking about the housing market, how to get you in your first rental property, everything real estate. Please come on by and check me, check us out. All right, all right, people. So that's it. That's Pocket Watching with JT. Next episode is going to be this Friday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, live stream. Got a couple of guests and people that I'm trying to get on the show. But whatever, no matter what happens, we're going to have a good show. Call me up if you have questions. That's what this phone number is for. Not only to call about the topic that we're talking about, but you can call me about your personal financial situation. You're not talking to an internet guru. You're talking to a guy who went to school for this, graduated, got licensed, got certified. I'm going to give you real, obtainable, actionable financial advice to help you in your everyday life. I'm going to give you financial tips so that you can accomplish your goals, but no scammer stuff. I'm not going to teach you how to lie on forms. I'm not going to teach you to rack up a lot of credit card debt. I'm actually going to teach you how to stop living paycheck to paycheck and get out of debt. If you're interested in stop living paycheck to paycheck and getting out of debt, subscribe to Pocket Watching with JT. I'll see you guys Friday. I'm out.